this one here is going to be a um, quick video or an email I got. One second. Thank you guys for joining uh, the YouTube. I uh, did see um, some messages that I got there. So it just prompt me to do this one. But I gotta fix something real quick. Give me one second. Ah. Uh, Hope everything's going well with everyone, by the way. Gearing up into the, uh, the holiday months coming up. Oh, um, yes, I'm in Florida, but, um, we're kind of used to those uh, hurricane warnings. It's kind of weird because the ones that they usually think won't be a big deal sometimes become a big deal. But it's Florida. It rains almost every day. During the summertime anyway. When it's hot. We're so close to the water. Just The, uh, the cycle just kind of transitions. But I'm, um, we're doing okay. Florida has uh, a lot of good things going for it. Mm -hmm. On the uh, tutorial, I will. Uh, maybe changing some of the stuff on there for uh, steps I think that's what I'll try to do coming up for is uh, that's going to be for Moho uh, Inkscape by the way is always free um, th that is the tool you'll see me using most that's why I can kind of compile everything uh, for my uh, my animation but I will um, try to start doing some like steps as well where it's not just the mouse but you just follow along with the steps and the verbal communication I think that might be good for everyone the steps to show everything I know sometimes it just because I'm uh, I just start drawing and I uh, get in the Sometimes getting the fog of one. I don't know if anyone else does this. Sometimes when I'm trying to finish something, I'll be more relaxed when I just complete everything at the time. I don't recommend doing that a lot because I don't know how should I put this. Whenever you're doing any kind of art and you are not excited about it um, if you have the time I don't know there's a lot of pe people that may do and be doing some kind of features or just animation period uh, I'll, so maybe that will be familiar for some people there'll be times when you're working on something and you just keep working on it over and over again and at some point between you being excited about whatever you're doing It'll um, it'll change, so I'm trying not to get to the point where I do that. But that's kind of hard when you do um, if you're doing a lot of different things or different projects or whatever. 
uh, it could be difficult. So, you know, try to take a break because I'm no. If I'm not doing anything for I don't know, say a week or, or or so, I start to get the excitement back of what I'm working on, and that and it kind of comes and goes. So, always take your time and don't. If possible, don't try to you know rush and get everything done right away. If you have the uh, the luxury of doing it, but sometimes I'll, I'll I don't like doing that because then it becomes not really what I want as far as and then I gotta change it anyway. So, but I get that way sometimes. So right now, when I'm trying to do this tutorial for YouTube, I'll start to see something that I <laughs> want to just get done, and then I'll go back to you guys. So if you ever hear, if it's quiet, I'm still here. I'm probably just, as long as you see the mouth um, moving, just means that I will eventually get to what I uh, s announced at the beginning of the video. This one is going to be, I think I'll do two things here. I'm going to go over the eyeball, how to kind of draw that out, and uh, what was the other one? Can't remember, it lost me. But the other one was about character and like subtle movements. Um, but I'm going to show you a trick in Moho uh, that will kind of help you out. And I'm talking about movements like breathing or like head movements, stuff like that. Usually, it, you see this a lot though. If you watch a lot of animations, you'll see the background characters not moving, but there'll be a like a sound of people in the back, like a crowd of people. You know, a lot of animators do that. I'm not sure who did that first, but you may see that a lot where you know the background people are just still, or they're um, like a almost like they're frozen in time but the characters in um, in the uh, the front of that will be moving around but there are ways to do like subtle movements like say you know you're doing something a cafeteria scene or something like that and you don't want them moving too crazy but on a scene like that you could technically um, just have them move in their mouth or you know move s small head movements nothing to take away from what's going on and um and by the way the, I'm not talking about Disney or w any of those I'm just talking about if you're trying to do a, a, a small project where you 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 want to have the background and the audience of where you are in the scene um, and you not Disney because Disney you'll see the characters they're moving they'll have a whole bunch of things going on in the background because that render must be really well worked um, it's not always a good thing when you are not working with high uh, tech equipment and not by that means I mean computers or s like whatever you're doing as far as the platform if you're just trying to get something out there where you want to do a short video where you you you're pitching it to the the people so they can understand what's going on in the background and then if they want to spend money on character movement in the background they can but there's a lot of Japan animation or uh, uh, enemy that do that you'll see that where the the characters are smiling but they're frozen and you know it's just um, scanning across the screen so just take that in mind and again anything I say about animation it is not anything like hey he's the boss it's more of different styles for different ways to do things and the reason why I always say this about making sure that you don't have to have a certain style that's a certain style of 
animation or whatever they've been doing for, for a long period of time you have the ability to do something new or different that is always a good thing don't don't ever like you know step on anything you're doing as far as the uh, the animation to try to like make it feel like something that you've already seen doesn't have to be like that and there was a lot of things that I, I look at like that kinda like when you first saw you know the movie 300 that wasn't done before and the style technically looks kinda crazy if you don't you know all of those uh, you know I, He's a good guy, I guess. But when he did that, <laughs> everything else uh, that he does, he gets, I'll just put it this way, he gets away with a lot of stuff. And when you first seen the, that, the, I think what, what the biggest part of that 300 movie was, and I'm not talking about animation here. This is a movie. I think the style that he chose was new to the point where it's like oh wow they've never seen anything like that before so I think he got like some some and the story's great you know it's a story from the uh, exactly what I don't know if it's real they always say it's real uh, it's a story about um, what actually happened and uh, you know he takes liberties but I think because of that his style and the way it looked it, it gave him a lot of room to kind of like not have to worry about dialogue because those images were you know that freeze thing that he does and that slow motion that he does you know what I mean so and and I like that movie and it's, it's not really a critique on what uh, he's doing I just want to make a point that you know, try a style that no one's ever seen before. I like to see things that are different. In art school, when you do those fundamentals, or if you ever went to uh, art school, that was one thing. I don't know. I guess I could feel it right away. It's like they were. Some, if you're doing anything that they're not used to and it, it doesn't appeal to them, they kind of brush it off. So I guess that's why I always say to people, don't let anyone do that, you know. Don't worry about what they think. As, and um, I go back to this as well. As long as the story's good, that's all that matters to me. Did I go over the hurricane? I think I did. I think I talked about the hurricane already. But yes, we uh, wh where I'm at in Florida, I'm, we're, we're okay.
again, um, any questions that you guys have, you can send them to the email. I do read those. <laughs> On uh, there's a group that we have that we usually talk. Um, so people are asking me, what is that forum? It's not really a forum. It's just basically us uh, drawing and talking to each other. So it's not like a um, not a live kind of thing. But uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can do that too as well. So basically, while I'm doing something, speaking to speaking to uh, people that have questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. Seven AM. Um and in a day like uh, uh seven AM means like one more hour is like my bedtime. So I'm like a vampire. While everyone else is probably getting ready to go, I'm going to sleep. All right, we'll play around with this later. Let's get to the thing because I am tired to tie it. Okay. Oh, um, on paint, I'm just gonna go over this. Maybe I've already been over this before and paint whenever you see me um, like filling blank it's uh, set up like this here where this should be clear and then let's go to a paintbrush so right now this is clear right technically it's not going to paint anything it's just clear when you switch this to overwrite And let's say I'll click the paint bucket to fill. It'll basically uh, based on the tolerance here. So let's take the tolerance up and down. See, it's, you can erase the whole thing, or it'll just piece by piece. Um, I use that for fill sometimes if I'm doing a kind of angle and I want to start over. Um, that's what I usually will do. And then in paint, the other thing that you may see me do is I'm never painting on the same or drawing on the same one. So this right here technically would be here. Whenever I'm doing any kind of outline, I'll have a I'll add another one, a blank one, and then I'll, that's when I'll be. And that's how I do it. Because what the hell did I do? Oh, <laughs> there we go. So basically, what um, whenever I'm painting over, not painting, drawing over something, basically I can click on this here, and if I did mess up something, it's not going to affect this this image here. So whenever I come back and I do color and stuff like that, when you see me drawing on top, that's what I'm basically doing. Um, because if I'm if there's a curve that I don't like and I'm kind of weird with certain things. Um, I don't want to um, mess up the, uh, the the original, and I'll just usually I'll keep making more and more and saving um, some of these the same way for uh, later. Because again, I use certain things over and over again, and it'll give me the ability to go back and color something different. Um, and I use that for the uh, the vector too, because. Uh, that just helps me out a lot and, and if you make a mistake you can just you know create duplicates of whatever you're doing so if you're feeling weird about something and you just like oh, I want to save it at this certain point and sh go back later um, paint lets me do that and it's real easy that's why I like to set up mm -mm -mm -mm.
also when I'm in paint and I want to move this into Inkscape just select like this like so and then you edit copy and open up the old Inkscape and then edit and paste and that should bring in your thing right there so while this is open I forgot what part that was and memory was on the other end there we go one second I'm I gotta line something up real quick And again, um, the thing, whatever you end up doing, uh, and then you do save it in uh, Paint, uh, you can always go back to the archives and change whatever you want to change on there as well. So on this breathing thing for the, uh, let's go ahead and get these arms over where they should be. Am I missing an arm? Yeah, I'm not good. Yes, I should be right down. Clip right there. So, 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 um, uh, what color is it? Um, which one was this? Uh, so the other one, did I, um, I think I drafted it out. Um, so for the neck, someone was asking me about the ish shadow mm -mm 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 -mm. and I'm not going to vectorize this because I'm going to do it really quick so it, it kind of looks rough but that's okay for now so a couple ways whenever you um do my little mold here whenever you see me do this mold it's it's just me using um i don't know think about it as like you using clay so when i open this up and i click here or you know put basically i have this piece here right i use paint bucket and just click fill and what it does is give me what i call like clay uh the kind of mess around with the reason why I do that is because on here I can't move this at all it's just a square stay square when I do it and create a little mold for myself like so I can move this any way I like so when pe <laughs> people are saying this is, what is he I that's what it is I'm just think of it as like I just make a little piece of clay and kind of piece it together how I want it to uh, to be uh, all right so on the shadow you usually have this part here right so on oh, I'll just make another one and we'll reverse it so edit uh, duplicate flip all right so there's a couple things on the neck right so this here is going to put the shadow in the, the rear of the neck right so 
technically we're looking at something straight ahead all right the shadow part of the neck is gonna go in the back right so let's on top so whenever you do have the the uh, and again it's rough I'm just I'm, I'm not gonna vectorize a lot of stuff yet so the shadow should technically be uh, here right and then also here right so let's go ahead and mm -mm -mm. What is going on here? <laughs> what is this white? Oh, I didn't I didn't realize I did that. Okay. Hey, you did something dumb. Alright, so if we're looking at the neck like so. Fix our clay here real quick. You'll have um this a little bit darker and it's up to you again you don't have to do anything like this so or you're just having this small little piece in the front all right uh, so that just technically it's not going to give it depth but that's basically what it's for all right so let's say I'll put it right about there uh, so usually what I do is this shadow here of course it's going to be on this side uh, but you want to kind of do a curvature uh, like so because technically under this chin right it's going to have a shadow it's not going to just be one area so sometimes I'll do this where I'll have a little loop in it or I do have the chin, you know. And you can make this a little bit darker. The darker you make it, th it the better it actually technically should be. Because you, you shouldn't really see it, you know. So, um, but you'll see a lot of different methods. Um, so on this one, when I do kind of want to curve it you can do it just like like so but it's just giving space you just want to see a small space here right so the shadow play around with it and get it to however you like to do it um, but that's one way to do it where is that and you just want to give the illusion that uh, you know it has uh, depth to it I don't like that. Let the curve all the way up. And again, you can play around with it, figure out something that you want to kind of stick with. Mm, that's okay for now. We'll play around with it when I get into uh, ink tape. So the other thing is, um, it depends on how dark you want to make it as far as the shadow but anything uh, under the where this hood is at shadow so like the backpack straps let's say you know right about there Oh, 
that one was already done. So, um, so that's where that shadow would be technically here and technically here. Uh, under here, of course, when you get to the backpack, it doesn't matter uh, too much. Because um, technically, this. Can't, what scene is this? I'm losing my mind. It's because you're tired. Mm, what scene is. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I just remembered. Am I supposed to put this up on the other side? Of course. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sorry, guys. We'll go back to the eyeball as well. I just got a Samsung. So, 843. So, that will be... 5... No, 50, 22 seconds. No, 10 seconds. But I, did I? Why did I say 22 seconds? I think I did say that. Uh, I don't remember. 22 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Huh, okay. Maybe I did that for a reason. But we don't need to be playing around with this anymore. Mm -mm, get that out of the way. Chris Wall is this other one for the other side. Man, you're losing your mind, buddy. Okay, so I think that was the scene because it was a close up of the other side. Let me see. because it a hood. All right, one second. I knew I was not losing my mind. I knew something was up. This, um, I just need to do this because this is for blocking. I need to cut it up real quick. And we're in eraser mode. Clicked on this. Uh, we're going to be doing a line. And then make sure this is here. Like so. For override. And this is the number that you should have there. So when I do cut out, you know, trim this down a little bit here. Just do it with uh, a straight line. So I'll cut this here real close. Cut this, and again, I still got to vector, go back and vectorize this stuff. So, it's kind of rough, but just for the tutorial, we'll just get a little bit quicker. Let's see, that was a pinch on the other one. This is supposed to be all black. Mm -hmm. 
this is because I'll be uh, using um, a neck and when I do that I usually will just do a little box and then fill it in but we're going to be using this for something else here and before I mess around with this here sometimes it's good to save just in case go back here Just need to get a piece, and that goes on top. I can't remember how close it was, so it should be here. That should be good enough. I do that so technically this here we're gonna keep this a little smaller or is the arm that's not the new one I don't even think I brought the new one in there. No, I did it. So, let's see. Um, and I'm not going to perfectly line it up. So on the arm, whenever you are moving, sometimes the arm will be in front of the body or behind the body. So on this here, I'm just going to click this to the back. So technically right now, um, it's just a dry run. This arm is, you know what, let's get what we need to get and do it the right way. Because we just curved it out. Let's. Again, that'll be uh, edit, copy, and go to Inkscape, edit, paste. I'll get this right to the size. After I line this up, I'll do the uh, the eyeball again. I thought I did it before, but I wasn't sure. I just bring this in. Oh, moving around way too crazy. There we go. Uh, brain starting to shut down.
again on the neck. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bring it to the back. And if you want to get it a little bit. Uh, if you want to do outlines, you can do that as well. But I gotta come back and vectorize all this, these pieces anyway. So make sure we get the neck the way. Tetris. Shadows. Back. And um, I recommend just making this one piece. When I go back and vectorize, I, I make this usually one whole piece. I kind of play around with it to see, you know, kind of where I want to, how I want it to look. But once you do, then I think I said this before. There's always going to be um, the arms away from the body if you're going to be animated in it. So, you know, you should have those pieces down. Where's my... Uh, there we go. Uh, so, that goes behind everything else. This should go here. And then um, the the thing about the vectorizing, once you do that and get everything the way you need it, uh, it'll look really clean for you there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Try to keep all your templates. I forgot to draw the knife in the pocket. That's okay. We'll do it later. And uh, usually all the pieces that you have, it's going to be the arm is usually cut with two pieces and then the hand and then the arm uh, cutting two pieces in the hand um, in Moho you can do it a different way where it won't be it won't look like a like a bendy donut so um, there's two ways to do it you can do it with a uh, two pieces where you'll have um, like a blocking piece like right about here where the, the arm bends but technically you would have a uh, you would cut here for the top part of the arm and then where the elbow pretty much bends is where you're going to do the cut so wherever your elbow is going to bend um, that's where you kind of want that to be and then what you would do is over the elbow you would use a block something in uh, moho it's it's a way to basically cover up um, and made this like one joint where you can't see any space between the two and then you would uh, also do that for the uh, the hand so one two three pieces for the both arms so one two three one two three uh, the body pieces would be one solid piece and it's going to always be based on what you know what you're doing you don't always animate anything uh, like on this close-up scene, you're he's not gonna you're not gonna see, need to see his hands, so. But um, that's how you would do that. If you're um, because I'm we're just gonna be animating one part of the arm. And so we got all our people. Is this cut out? No, it's not cut out. 
a little bit smaller. I think it's wrong. Right about uh, angles off. Um, by the way, whenever you're trying to do the angles, this little X, you click on this, and it'll uh, kind of turn on wherever that is. So right here, put it there. And then if you want to move it, see what happens. So, but we want it where the joint is. I, I use that this to kind of figure out where all the joints would be. So, it gives me leverage to move it around the way I need it to before we go to the next step. Close enough for now. And then Did it just move the arm? I didn't do that, did I? Undo. Edit. Undo. That's weird. Must be going crazy. Oh, I'm tired. Now, right there we go. Right there. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll go. back don't tell me I just did this okay I thought I did the same thing but again and I'm just bringing everything back so it's the coat where it needs to be or the jacket. Go there. There we go. Mm Again, you can kind of play around with the shadows however you like. I usually do two. Sometimes it'll be offset on the other side, um, but that looks like it's okay there. And I use the uh, ink tape for storage as well, so you can see a lot of different pieces there. What 
did I do with that background? Didn't I use that already? Oh, God. This is why you don't work all night. Okay, this was... I'll write that down. So, AB4 scene. That was f the first... Okay, AB4, AB5. Alright, I got that. And transitions to what? So that'll X right there, and then the other. Pro okay, yeah, now I remember. Okay, we're good. And starting frame there. Uh, frame six and eight. One, two, three, six. Goes back to the search for. And using the equipment, this one goes back to wakes up after dream. Write that down, and then the final. Okay, yeah, the final one's over there, so we can get him out of here real quick. Copy. Uh, he should be here. So. Yeah, and that should be 608 and 607. So 608 and 607. And that, those two will go on that one there. So we'll open that one up. The beginning of the scene will be here. And then this one was the last piece for that scene I think yes yeah, so let's hope yep so 808 I, that's why it was 22 supposed to be 22 seconds so this is gonna come here and then him in the foreground and what I, I missed the oh the fog that's what it was. Edit. Duplicate all. Scene was 516 foreground. So. Seven, four, oh, eight, and four, oh, seven. Three. Sorry, one will be one second. I'll do the uh, the eyeball and it should be out of here in a second. That's four, oh, three. That's why four, oh, three. Four, oh, seven. Close up four oh three. This looks it's too big. I can tell already, but we'll fix that later. Four oh four. Let's see the film update. Six oh three. So that should be. 603, 604. So, this one. And then, 603. And, that should be, I think that's right. I think that's right. All right. Uh, so on the eyeballs, there's a couple ways I do it here. Uh, I'm gonna make a little circle like this. Edit and then duplicate. Change the color. 
because we're going to make a, a ring. And based on however you want, you can make it the, the ring as uh, thin as you want. So, I just undo. So what I do here is I just basically take the bucket, and I just want to create a ring. So that's instead of doing it the, the long way, that's how I do it here. And we create it like so. And that's too thick. So we'll just do another one, and make sure the width is lower. That's a little bit better. Um, so uh, we'll do another piece here, and it'll. I basically do it the same way. Just fill like so, and I can duplicate this. Uh, there. So I'll have this piece here. Let's make another circle here. And let's see what color. We'll do uh, like a light green. And let's do edit duplicates. And then whatever color you like, uh, kind of blend, but I'm going to go right about there. Well, right on. So we have these two on the half. Again, it's going to be based on what you want to do there. And let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do a little bit weird. Maybe a tint of. So the first part is usually going to be the outline part, and you can do it this way here. Send it to the back that way, like so. This one here, you can start to blend in with the blur. And these pieces here, you can lower right about there. And technically, you can put it wherever you like. Uh, usually, I'll put it on top, depicting, depending on what I'm doing. And this one here, and you can do whatever curves you like. part right here is going to be how you're going to uh, determine what you want to do with how low or high you get it. Uh, the lens on the outside won't look like a lens. So then the last part is just the black part of the arm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You can play around with this as much as you like. And that 
last one you can make solid. It's all up to you. And sometimes I'll just move these around a little bit, depending on how I'm feeling. I think we're going to get this a little bit greener, like that, close enough. Uh, and then you'll, you can do a little white ball here. This one you would just keep it a little bit light. So, and that's how I kind of do it. This right here, um, usually the lighter you make that, that'll be changed, you know. So, if you get it like this, this would be technically you could use this for, I don't know, the character looking at something shiny, uh, and then you can transition it however you like. Uh, depending on if you do a close up or something like that, you have the ability to kind of mess around with that, like so. And that's how I usually will do them. Uh, the key to this is if you know you've got it, uh, where's my head at? Get one. There we go. And what I do is kind of play with it into it, what I call looks uh, real to me. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, sorry. Object. Oop. Um, there's something that happens when that outline is still there, but that doesn't matter because you can fix that later. All of everything that you got in here, since you have a ring around it, you just gotta just squeeze all of these pieces in or like so. All right. Um, so what I'll do is I will kind of look at it. Now this technically would be for like a goblin or something that may work, right? Usually when you're a human being you can do a little bit more uh, subtly when it comes to this, but this technically would be, I, don't know, I guess, I don't know, goblin eyes or whatever. And let me show you what the transition will be for something different or mo what they call monster's eyes. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and duplicate this here. And um, I usually will always do a background of black because it kind of shows me if it's really okay as far as the blending because usually you, you won't see it um, like so. So if this is a vampire or whatever, uh, that's a little bit bigger. So if you get to the pupil here. Let's see, let's play around with and let's fix the color on the outside. And again, this is where you can just make any adjustment you want. Alright, as dark as you want, as light as you want it. The only thing that really reflects is anything on the outside. If you bring these in closer.
so that's the background color right you see how it changes a whole the whole eye now let's see what this would look like And um, then when you go back to doing whatever your blend, uh, you, you know, kind of play around with it to see if whatever you like. Um, so usually the plainer this is. the more normal it may look for you and then the other thing is when you do it like uh, the white blend I can do it as well Let's tuck this where it needs to be And again, you can play around with it. Um, but just, just all those pieces I have, you know, got the piece here. This is pretty much the same, but it's just a blend. But and then the back, and then those two halves. Two halves you can just uh, adjust them. However, and the more you, the different ways of adjusting, it'll it gives a different appearance. And then your little uh, so, and then where is it at? There we go. All right, so that like that. And again, you can play around with it all you like. So two curves, one, two. The background, whatever you want that color to be. Uh, the ring, and then the pupil and then the pupil should have a well it doesn't have to but the pupil should have like a blending with it like so and sometimes the smaller you make uh, one or the other like so whatever darker blend you use you'll see the difference as well and without the outline and it'll change it up again so if you make it darker or lighter based on usually if you do a whole black eye it looks weird too for like on human characters but you can do that make it dark 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 as you like and if you're doing just a simple eye that also looks more human and you just do more blending on that part or you just want to have uh, your little piece here Um, blend it and then real real uh, subtle for the the top one and you will also keep the other one that uh, the not blur like so and the bigger you make this uh, for some reason it looks kind of weird and then that's it so and again play around with it figure out if that works for you sometimes it doesn't you know it's up to you uh, I think that was it wasn't it oh the breathing let's go ahead and go to moho here I think that's already up yep so let's bring in these pieces I need Mm -mm 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 -mm. Alright, so body piece, head, arm, another arm, Uh, 
Moho is what I'm using here. It's uh, they do have a trial version of this as well. And so I gotta get black background here. Creative box. Uh, and this is uh, four, uh, fourteen. Um, they also call lost marbles. So if you don't see it under uh, Moho, you can look for the lost uh, marbles. All right. So why does this keep switching me out over there? Okay. Is that left or is it to my right? No, it's facing the other way. Yeah, because I'm facing it, that's why. Um, once I vectorize this, I'm going to be use this character is going to be set up. Um, so we'll be using it. I'm make some adjustments on the eye this is the body and then left arm okay so what usually I'll, I put the arms in back but I'm just going to do a real quick thing here because uh, the layers are set up a certain way. So head's always going to be on top of everything, like so. And he doesn't need a neck for this part, but. And then let's go ahead and create a group. Put all our pieces in here, like so. Right, should have them in order here. Um, the body, I usually have it on top of the arms, and then I do a transition on that. I'll do a video on that, so based on wherever. Um, but the reason why uh, this piece, uh, edit, copy, let's export. get that in here as well peace this would go on top of everything except for the head it'll go on top of the body like so and I'll do another video explain why after I have it all vectorized and cleaned up and looking like something that you would want to watch And his ability to use a switch for that. So, so all of these are in the same place here. Everything's good. Uh, yeah, so everything's good. So on on the the subtle breathing part, let's go ahead and change these into a bone layer, like so. And let's start with the first bone. Add bone here. And you start from the pelvis. So it'll go one bone here. You'll have another one here. And I don't usually do the neck, but 
let's go ahead and we'll do another one now just to be for the neck and then a bone for the head like so and let me lower this head I want you to be able to see the bone, so I'll see if I can lower this. Apply. Okay. And it did nothing. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and try to do the body. And we'll get this. That should work here. So. Did it do it? Yeah. Uh, still hard to see. All right, let's do something else. going on today am I we'll do it a different way should be a little bit better all right there we go leave the head one so basically this one is going to be the first one here and we're going to select all of these we could hit shift and then click on that and that one so all three of these are highlighted and selected and then you'll go to the body right here and go to bone and it, see here where it says use selected bones for flex binding and that's the one we want it's going to use all three of those bones for the body click on that like so all right uh, next one here or the next uh, bone we're going to select is going to be the head one and that'll be this one here you just select it and you go back to where the head is and then you're going to go back to do the head the same way we did the body and it's only going to be one bone so we'll click this use selected bone for flex binding alright that's for the bone for the head and then you're going to have the uh, arms so let me go ahead and get rid of this so for the arms if you remember this is the neck bone right this is the one for the head these two are the big part of the uh, the body so you want the next bones that you're going to create which are going to be the arms like so right and where's the other arm right ah, there we go so there you go so basically this is where we want the bone to join for these two pieces here and I'm not going to break down the whole uh, part because we're just going to be doing uh, subtle movement for like breathing. 
So what we'll do is we're going to select sure we want a bone layer at the top. We'll this is already selected, and then we'll create some bones for the arms. So one here, and then there's one here. and one here and then one for the hand all right and this is going to be all for that arm so let's go and just select everything again remember to hit shift here and you'll click on this this one and this one all right and we got already selected for the arm and this is going to be the shoulder technically where that joint will be this will be where the arm is going to lift up this is a little bit off for the elbow but you can make an adjustment and this will be that forearm and then the hand at the bottom all right so let's go to the right arm we'll select the right arm here go back to the bone and we'll do what we did with the other ones. S use selected bones for flex binding. That means all the bones use, we want to use all the ones that we highlighted or selected. And then you just click it again, use select bones. And that'll be it. Uh, I'm not going to do the other arm because we don't really need to do that. But what you'll do here, we'll get every, all these other pieces back together. So body and then the head and we'll go to the bone. So let's see, let's make a movement here. We'll go to this here and this is just transform bone and we're going to just see how that works. All right. This is the shoulder. All right. You know what? We got to fix that because that's going to annoy me. Let's create go back and create some other bones here all right so we're gonna go back to this bone here the left arm and we're gonna do the same thing again don't worry about the angle we can fix that later and we're gonna oh made a mistake make sure this is at the beginning all right and then there we go. So we're going to do the same thing we did for the right arm to left arm. Alright, so the shoulder. And then the top of the arm there. And another bone for the bottom part of the arm. It has no hand on this scene, um, but we'll add it anyway. Alright. Then we'll go back to on screen. We'll go to click shift again. All right. And we're going to select this one, this one, this one. All right. So all of these are going to be selected just like we did for the right arm. And then we're going to go to select the left arm, right? All our bones are highlighted that we want to have associated with this left arm. And then we're going to go ahead and go back where we went before. Bone. Use selected bones for all binding. All right, there we go. So that's our last piece. So we've got the head got the body we got the left arm and then the right arm all right all right so now let's go back and kind of play around with it so let's move to this frame here all right so let's see okay um, I'm going to show you how to fix this bendy thing um, right now it won't matter because 
we're going to be doing uh, the body stuff but you see where all the joints are so you got the shoulder right I'll show you how to do the shoulder where it doesn't look crazy like that in a different video same thing here right see the head okay head looks like it's doing normal stuff neck okay good shoulder movement for the neck you know what you can technically do if you want these two pieces here you can add that did we add that to the body I don't know let's go over body let's see alright let's see what we did with the butt oh that's not good go back all right. Let's see. Let's move the arms out of the way and the head. There we go. All right. So let's see the body here. So this is basically your going to be your pivot point, All right? The, where that pelvis is. Technically, this is uh, undo. Uh, this is where the stomach should bend right right about in the middle so we're going to fix this part here for the shoulders right so let's go back to this select phones let's go to click on one of them I'm going to click shift and click on this all right so we have the shoulders connected and I made a mistake as well there we got both of these uh, shoulder pieces here we're going to associate these with the body so we'll go to the body sorry that's my alarm clock to go to bed <laughs> and we're going to go back to the bone and the bones we select, we'll group, uh, click use selected bone for flex binding again. And let's see now if these are associated with the body here. So let's go. So did I do that right? Or did I? I think I messed this up. Uh, one second. yeah I think I did alright well we'll do another video on how to fix things that we miss up um no you know what I just did something stupid again because I'm tired alright so let's move this and then I think we did fix it okay there we go alright so these are now shoulder movements for the body alright so this hand won't mess up I'm bringing everything in and the head. Alright. So once we added these bones, right, you see we have shoulder movement, right? Like so. And these are off because uh on this scene it's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, but everything is good to go, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, that's not good to go but we'll fix that later I'm gonna do a second part to this whenever I wake up tonight all right there yeah yeah, 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 yeah. all right um but that's it now if you have any questions um you can send them to the email I do read those I do appreciate everyone just watching the video I don't care if it's seven people or 20. Uh, when I wake up and I see people are actually watching the videos, that's a good thing. Alrighty, uh, you guys have a great uh, day. And I will be going to sleep. Thanks for watching again. Bye bye.